Welcome back to the channel everyone. So a little bit different scene. We're actually inside today. Today was a very important day. Uh, let's see, 11 months ago, if you look back in my videos to 11 months ago, there's a video called How Big Is This Fish? Or How Big Is This Bass? And the thumbnail is me holding up this Mondo fish. And it was a big bass that I caught on Lake Talquin last year, last May actually. So almost, like literally 11 months ago. It was a big old bass. We estimated it to be about a nine pounder. And uh, I caught it on some nine inch ribbon tail worms that Simple Jack and I had made the night before, just using some old remelt. And um, the fish wound up dying in the live well and it was big enough. I said, hey, I've got to mount this thing. Let's go check it out. Just got the mount back from the taxidermy and she's a beaut. Landon wanted to say hello. What's up, buddy? All right, there she is. Look at this beast. I even kept the worm that got her. Yeah, just some old remelt madness there. It's a nine inch bass tackle worm. I call it the candy cane. And here is the fish. I had the taxidermy kind of keep the fins kind of tore up and natural. A lot of times they'll clean them up and make the edges smooth. But I like, I like the fish to look like it did when you caught it. Oh yeah, you want the worm, buddy? Yeah, here, no, 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 don't tear it in half. That's an important worm. He likes to rip my spare baits in half. That's one of his hobbies. So yeah, look at that, you guys. Absolute Mondo fish. And when you do a real skin mount, you really get the detail. You know, it's, it's, the, real, it's the real bone structure, facial structure, the real fins. You just can't duplicate it, so yeah. A lot of people don't like keeping big bass. I have no problem with it if you're gonna mount it and, and really enjoy the fish. Now, I would never keep that just to eat it, but um, yeah, beautiful fish. Wanted to share it with you guys. And there's my biggest one right there. That one was 11 pounds, two ounces, and uh, it's from the same taxidermy. So, same exact. I mean, they are just absolutely spectacular taxidermists. This was caught on an old Zoom horny toad. I think it was August 10th, 2006. Watermelon red pearl horny toad. So that's my biggest one. And this is a really important fish catch. There's a lake in Tallahassee called Car Lake. It's spelled with two R's. It's, it's a really hard lake to fish. And uh, I finally got a big one out of there. She's about eight and a half pounds. And this is my little custom swim bait. You may have seen this on the channel. I threw this on the back of a swim jig and caught that fish. So that's probably um, that's probably the biggest bass I've ever caught on on a any sort of swim bait. I've caught some big ones on the Alabama rig, but but not any eight and a half pounders. And here's an actual long nose gar done by the same taxidermy. It's hardened taxidermy in Thomasville. Really cool mount. Probably don't see a lot of people throwing three hundred dollars at a stinky old gar, but I've always kind of thought they were awesome fish. All right. So today we're gonna to get a little more technical. So recently we've done a back to the basics type video, um, <clears throat> which thank you to everyone who watched that or any video for that matter. Um, we're definitely gonna do, uh, I think a pretty good amount of back to the basics videos. Um, you know, that's all good information to have. And if you're new to my channel and new to baits, you know, you may not have gone back and watched some of the, some of the more basic uh, color tutorials and, um, and, and sort of beginner videos from a year or two years ago. Um, so it's probably a good idea to refresh some of those um, topics um, with, you know, even more knowledge now. You know, every year you do it, you get better and you gain knowledge just like you know any apprenticeship you know whether you're a, a musician or um, you know if you, if you play sports or just whatever it is so um, but we're gonna get kind of technical today we're gonna break out the open pour molds by the way if you follow me on Instagram you might have seen that the four inch version of the angling AI open pour mold is coming next so we're gonna get our hands on that soon and uh, we're going to do some video, of, you know, a, a kind of a launch video for it. Really show how cool that thing's going to be. 
I'm pretty excited. So um, anyway, the four inch is going to be next, but we're going to be playing with our six inch today. And we're going to we're going to do a fire tiger pattern. So uh, just real briefly, um, here are some of the colors we're going to be using. We're going to do sort of an orange bottom, a gold and chartreuse top. That is, uh, or excuse me, sort of like a skin in a middle layer. That's just gold powder. That's dead on chartreuse colorant. The top is just going to be some of this green mica powder. Um, I think I got that from solar dust. And then some uh, flow lime, one of my favorite greens um, from Lureworks. And I think those are the colors that, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're going to build off of uh, to do the black stripes. I actually have some black remelt um, that I am cooking right now. And uh, we're going to break the molds open and get to work. Okay, so I have my molds laid out here and opened up. And to do the fire tiger stripes, you guessed it, we're going to hand pour them individually. So, yeah, let's see if I can do it in focus and do it right. Just little teeny tiny micro pores here. Okay. All right. That's essentially what one of the lines looks like. So, again, the next one up here. Ah, see, too thick. But I actually like the shape of that because they're not really supposed to be. Um, perfectly straight up and down, you know, the fire tiger pattern. It's a little winky wonky. Um, so we, we might stick with that, but uh, it'll be a lot easier for me to pour these off camera. But just to kind of show you how uh, involved this is, you know, I uh, wanted to film this part, of course. So, you know, for example, there's one half of one volt, you know. <laughs> Now I got to do it again, and I got to do it 12 times. So, yeah, you know, I I, I do sell, um, you know, some of my baits that are that are this difficult. You know, that have all these. See, that wasn't even enough. You know, I, I do sell some of these types of creations that have all these crazy steps. You know, and some people think I'm crazy when I say they're eight dollars a piece. Well, you'll kind of see why uh, on this video. So. You know, there's a lot of a lot of little steps involved and yeah you know I could probably actually pour those a little bit better but um, yeah there's there's a lot that goes into it when you want to pour patterns like this I mean you're, you're essentially trying to hand pour what people use airbrushes for on crankbaits and stuff so um, yeah that's that's basically step one Okay, little wide angle view there. We have them all striped. Okay, now we need to add the next layer, which is going to be a skin layer. Okay, and that will not only lock in our um, black stripes in place, you know, you pour a hot layer of plastic over those, and now you don't need to worry about your, your stripes falling out of place in the mold during the pouring process. It kind of locks them in. Um, so it will do that and it will provide the green kind of middle color. Um, well, sort of the, the, the bright yellow with chartreuse middle color. Uh, the green color is technically on top. So um, we're going to get that prepared and uh, do the next step. Okay, so now it's time for our skin layer. So we're going to add some, yeah, whoa, zoomed in there. Dead on chartreuse, okay. Pretty good amount. Oops. And... I want to add some gold pearl just so that it has a pearl effect, but it won't really change the color of the chartreuse a whole lot. It'll still be um, bright like we want it to, but it'll just have a pearlescent look to it, which I really want um, throughout the bait. Okay. Let's see, is that focused, y'all? Let me let's see if I can. You know, may have to zoom out. It's a uh, kind of a weird angle, but anyway, that's going to be our skin layer. Okay, so now we want to skin pour um, sort of a thin layer down the mold 
we want to leave some room open on the bottom so we don't want it to go all the way to the bottom because that's where our kind of orange belly is going to be and we don't want it to go all the way to the top so it's literally going to be a layer just sort of sort of a strip almost okay just like that perfect and doing the skin pour technique what that allows to happen is the darker green top it will naturally kind of fade and blend into that chartreuse it won't just be a, a line so to speak same with the bottom it will kind of blend in more um, so that's the idea there is I just want a layer down the middle of the bait I don't want it all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom pretty much just like that you know fill up the nose okay maybe let it run out some let it kind of go towards the bottom a little bit and that's it kind of looks like a bumblebee doesn't it okay and there we are we have our skinned and striped um, <laughs> fire tiger swim baits so hopefully that turns out well now we're gonna put them together we're gonna clamp them up on the molds uh, excuse me on the uh, heat griddle set it to about 350 or so 300 between there um, and then we're gonna mix up some orange to pour sort of an orange belly um, and then we're actually gonna make up mix up the chartreuse again to kind of fill it in and then finish it off with a green top yeah so if we just look at your average fire tiger you got an orange belly that bright chartreuse and then sort of a greenish top so that's um that's what we're trying to accomplish here okay so now for the orange bottom i love the dead-on plastics orange now they have a neo orange they have like a neo peach that are just sort of a little bit more bright versions but this one right here works well and i don't need a lot of it especially for a tiny tiny serving of plastic like that um yeah that's going to be perfect because I want a little bit of see-through to it, okay? You know, because I, I have to think, you know, it's going to be kind of blended in with some of the other colors. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, so we have our hot molds here, and I'm going to try to do this at the best angle that I can. I am not pouring much, much of this orange into the bottom, just to fill it up a little bit. That's about it. Literally just a hint of orange on the bottom there. So you can see that plastic will kind of continue to spread itself out. And let's say you wanted just the orange belly up in the nose. Well, you would actually tilt the molds while they're clamped um, and, and pour just that part with, with the orange. So um, yeah, we're not doing a lot of orange in the bellies. Um, you know we, we really just want a hint of orange on the bottom and that's why the next step is going to be so important but i'm going to go ahead and pour the rest of the orange bellies then i'll show you what it looks like okay so now we're back you can see our bellies there i actually poured them a little bit further up so i uh, took that one that first one poured it a little bit farther up but now there's there's if, if you look at these there's sort of a, a large gap right that orange is still well below the top of the hook slot. I can't just fill in the top green color now. There's going to be way too much green. It's going to throw kind of the color pattern off. So I need a filler color. So I'm actually going to mix up the same chartreuse. And that's going to be like our middle layer filler color. Which I'm then going to pour to the top of the hook slots like I normally would during any of my laminate hand pours. To kind of bring things back up to an even keel and then we'll top it off with our green all right so now we're gonna pour that new layer okay all right virtually the same thing and we're gonna pour it until it reaches where we normally would pour um, a, uh, a laminate color okay Now, since we're not doing a vein, I'm going to pour it a little higher. All right. Beautiful. 
this will blend in nicely I have a feeling so like I was mentioning previously um, if let, let's say you don't really like hand pouring or you know you're still struggling with it um, this so for example if you wanted to make a really cool fire tiger the angling AI bloodline swim bait mold this is absolutely the best injection swim bait mold it allows the most creativity the most options so for example if I wanted to do this fire tiger I could literally put chartreuse lines down the center for the blood lines, okay? Match it up with a gold eye or just whatever color eye uh, that, that you want. And then I could basically do a laminate, right? With orange on the bottom and a darker green on the top. Add black flake to both those sides to get kind of the all the color profiles. And boom, you know, you have an injection version of a three-layer... Um, bait essentially did y'all see that my power just flickered but anyway you know there there are injection ways to get some of these looks and this is absolutely it the angling ai bloodline swim bait mold you could get a mean fire tiger or a perch whatever you want to do um, using this system right here okay time to build the final color so we're going to use this green powder here now you'll notice that's not like a super bright green like you would normally think, you know, Fire Tiger basically just looks like a series of highlighters um, with some black markings on it. So we're going to brighten it up with some of this Flow Lime and just see what that gets us. I don't want it straight, just the brightest green in the world. That's why I'm kind of cutting it with some of that darker green powder. I just think it looks a little classier and not so much like your highlighter markers in fifth grade. So, from what I can tell already, hmm, what do I need there? I definitely want some more flow, but I also want more powder. So, hopefully I don't completely botch this, you know. That wasn't quite what I was looking for. It's getting there. Yeah, it has a nice pearlescent look to it you can you can definitely see the pearls but I definitely think it needs more of the brighter green um, and then I think we'll be about there yeah that's about there you guys and obviously you know you don't have to exactly match what you see on your strike crank strike king crankbait you know, this this is custom lure making you can do whatever you want all right, let's pour this final layer. We'll just kind of start right there. That's kind of comfortable. I want to do one where I can really watch what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully not a report. Oh, he'll report it. Look at that. God, what a rookie. You know, just when you think things are going your way, they ain't. All right. We're going to stop there on that one. Move on to this one back here. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. There's just... When you think you're going slow enough, go slower. It really does pay off in the end. I uh, actually did a couple more things to this green. I added some watermelon to darken it up. And then added some more of the bright stuff to thicken it up if that makes any sense and uh, I'm really happy with the way that it looks so hopefully hopefully I'm still happy with it in about 20 minutes when I can take these out of the molds alright we are actually gonna do some of the fire tiger bloodline swim baits cuz my curiosity got the better of me so hopefully this works out here okay Green on the top, orange on the bottom. I actually lightened up these colors a little bit to make them see through so that you can um, see the black flake. So if you have some plastic left over in a color and you want to make it lighter, you simply just add new raw plastic to it. And that basically throws off the uh, pigment ratio and you can lighten up your color without having to start all over essentially. So basically just take your leftovers 
add new plastic to it and voila you have a much more um, lighter mix which you know you can see those are both uh, very translucent all right drum roll please on these bloodlines all right let's see how we did why did that go out of focus 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 pocus eh. <clears throat> look at that <laughs> look how sexy that is there it is fire tiger bloodline swim baits results in five minutes not yet results in like an hour some of that's because i'm filming if i wasn't filming you could probably knock those out in like 30 minutes but look at that is that not awesome let's get one out and play with it yeah so you know just so many options man so many options and these were actually leftover bloodlines um, I would actually probably want to brighten those up that way there's a little more contrast between that and the green but I have to say these are straight up fire fire tiger fire if I must add yeah and I like the red eyes on them what do y'all think okay guys moment of truth let's see how we did let's see if I can get it open without Tearing it apart. Yeah, there we go. Oh my gosh, guys. Look at this. Eh, get out of there. Oh, man. Look at that. So, here's why we skin poured this. You might be wondering, Chris, why didn't you just pour an orange layer, then pour a thicker char chartreuse um, layer, and then pour your green layer? Well, you wouldn't get this blending so if we let me just zoom in actually if we look close things are blended in naturally if i had done it the other way it would still look good but you would have an orange line then a chartreuse line and and it, it would just it, it wouldn't be blended naturally so doing the skin pour layer and then filling in um filling so I'm getting tongue-tied here <laughs> The skin layer actually goes here. This yellow that you see there is that middle layer that we poured. And you can see how it kind of nicely filled in the center of the bait. That way we didn't have green, we didn't have this darker green behind that chartreuse, which would have darkened that up too much. We have chartreuse behind that chartreuse, which allows it to, to kind of give off that, that um, saturation there. So. Wow, I am super happy with these. Yeah, I was hoping it would work. And, uh, wow, I'm really, really satisfied. Let's get the rest of them out. All right, well, I hope these are coming through on camera uh, as well as they are in person. I mean, wow. Put a little logo eye on there just because it's a video. So, had my logo eyes done over at Dead Meat Custom. And of course, we're pouring this in uh, dead, on, uh, uh, dead on plastics craw tube blend, um, <clears throat> which I love for these big swim baits. Now, if I'm normally doing like the smaller bloodline swim baits, and then whenever the four inch hand pourer comes out, you wanna go with something a little softer. So we'll be using a lot of swim bait blend coming up uh, whenever we get our hands on the four inch version of that. Um, so anyway what do you guys think let's um let's kind of get them get them all out here together so there's the uh there's some of the bloodline versions yeah look at that two different takes on on the same sort of color and uh you know it's hard to argue that one's better um you know the hand pour allows you to obviously get a little bit more fancy with it but i mean holy cow those are hot let me tell you yeah i am absolutely digging those you guys look at that pretty cool got a little a little booger there all right well tell me what you think and uh I'm, I'm curious which one is your favorite do you like the let me go get it gotta reach over there and get it 
Do you like the injection bloodline take on it uh, the best or the hand pour the best? You know, it's, it's really hard to argue that one's more effective than the other. It's just uh, kind of two different, two different worlds, two different mindsets. But uh, I definitely wanted to um, kind of do sort of an advanced hand pouring tutorial. And I knew that this would be a good candidate doing Fire Tiger. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Or uh, if you already knew all this stuff, I hope you at least enjoyed. And, uh, and, and I hope you like the colors. Um, oh, speaking of fish mounts, that one back there that you've seen a hundred times. Um, well, hopefully you've seen it a hundred times. That's actually not even mine. Um, that's one of my good friends, James Parsons. Uh, he caught that back with me. Oh, this is probably like 2007. Um, and uh, when he and I used to room together in college, and when he moved out, he left it, so I claimed it. So we have a nice backdrop fish mount, about a, about a seven and a half pounder. He actually caught it. We, uh, we used to live bait fish a lot, so um, that was caught on like a little brim or something. But anyway, I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the hay or the rack as we say down here in the south. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, be on the lookout for that four inch open pour. I'm pretty excited. You know we're gonna throw some color shift into that thing right off the bat and do it the right way or, or do it big at least. Expensive. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. Shoot me lots of comments down below and we'll catch you next time.